Hi, my name is Alex, and in this video, I'm going to be doing another orc conversion from the set of miniatures I got in this Gretchen orc set. So I was looking over some of the miniatures that are on this set of um, orcs, and one of the things you can do is you can give the bigger orc, you can kind of see it here, you can give the bigger orc a squig. And I didn't want to just waste and not use that part of the miniature set, but it didn't really have a place in the larger project I was working on. So I decided to figure out how I could incorporate that into its own little miniature. And I thought, what if you had a little squig that was um, had a little wheel kind of like attached to it and had one of the little Gretchen riding on top of it. So I decided that I would dedicate an entire video to that project. So, the first order of business is to get the squig out of the sprue and clean up some of the mold lines. The face of the squig is actually only part of it. The rest of it is attached to the arm of the main big orc in this set. And so I cut that off mostly off camera because it's a little tricky to film and be safe with a knife. So then I can attach these two pieces using some of this weld bond that um, melts the two pieces of plastic and then lets it dry so that they're like one piece of plastic. I used it in my last orc video. And it's a really fantastic way to assemble your miniatures. As I mentioned in the intro, the idea for this project is that it's gonna be a squig with a big old wheel attached to him. So I had to get rid of some of the details on the squig itself, namely the little kind of arm bits that he's got going on. So I take that off with a craft knife and a file. I also chop off the tail of this guy I then use some milliput to create the wheel, which I unfortunately forgot to film me actually attaching that together. But as you can see here, once I get the shape right, I let it set and then sand it down a little bit with a file. I then attach some more milliput to separate between where the squig is connected and the wheel itself. And then I smoothen that out as much as possible before I let it all set. I then start working on the figure that is going to be riding this little squig wheel cutting out a long piece of wire and then folding that piece of wire in half, twisting together those two pieces of wire to make a torso for the miniature, and then bend out those two pieces of wires for the legs and add a separate piece of wire onto the torso to make the arms. As far as the pose that I wanted for this guy, I wanted him to be kind of flying off of the squig itself with only one hand in the reins and the rest of his body in the air. And once I figure out the pose, I can put him on one of the little bottles that I use for a sculpting handle and start adding on the first layer of green stuff. Since there are plenty of different head options for these guys, I decided I would use one of those for this sculpture so that I only have to worry about sculpting the actual uh, arms and legs of the miniature and not worry about what the head looks like. So once I add the head of the miniature, I can build up the rest of it so that it's ready for all of the details. And so I start by sculpting the legs of the miniature, giving him a pair of pants similar to some of the other miniatures that I've got from this set. As I mentioned in seemingly every video, having reference for what you're sculpting is super important. And it was kind of cool because I actually had 3D miniatures that I could use as references for my miniature, which is really helpful. That way I knew where to put all of my folds and to have all the little tears at the bottom of the foot, as you can see here, because I could base them off of miniatures that I was holding. Something that I thought would be a fun detail was to have the other arm actually grabbing onto the back of his head. So I move the wire for his arm accordingly. But before we get to that, as you can see me doing here, I start sculpting the rest of this Gretchen's body. Again, just using the other Gretchen that I have as reference, I give him kind of like a little bit of a pot belly, and I can base all the rest of the musculature on the other miniatures that I've got as well. And these guys are really, really fun to sculpt and an interesting kind of uh, experiment in anatomy because they have very kind of cartoony anatomy, so everything's a little bit bigger than it should be. And so it's actually a really great way to figure out what muscles you should be focusing on when you're sculpting anatomy. So I think sculpting a miniature like this could be a really, really great way to just uh, get a better sense of anatomy. But also I found it was really, really fun because you're kind of sculpting all these kind of large bubbly shapes. And I'm not entirely sure why, but for me, I find it really, really enjoyable to do. 
But anyways, here you can see me sculpting the hand for this guy that's on top of his head. And a really great trick for sculpting hands, whenever you can, just have it attached to something or holding on to something, because then you don't have to worry about making fingers kind of flowing in the air. They're actually attached to something. And I find it's a lot easier to sculpt that way. But once I finish the hand, I start working on the feet, and I noticed that a lot of these uh, little Gretchen miniatures had just wrappings around their feet. So I decided to do that because I felt like that would be a fairly easy way to uh, get the idea of the feet without actually having to do any weird details. I then go ahead and give this guy a belt, which will be really important because I was a little rough with the transition between the pants and the actual, like, his torso. So I add a belt there and just kind of cover that up. And once again, I'm basing this off of some of the belts that I've seen on some of the Gretchen miniatures that I have. And then with that, this guy is basically finished. All he needs is his other arm, which I'm actually going to be sculpting later. Because before I can sculpt that, I need to attach this guy onto the actual squig that we had made earlier. So I stick those two guys together, let it set, and then I can actually start sculpting the arm and hand, as well as some of the hair that is on the back of the squig. And I specifically sculpt the hand so that it looks like it's holding onto the uh, reins that are already connected to the squig miniature. I then take a piece of styrene and I'm going to be using that as the hubcap for this guy. Styrene just being a type of plastic that you can get in these sheets that's often used for making like model ships and that kind of a thing. As you can see here, I cut them into little hexagon type shapes and connect them with some super glue. And then I cut out some smaller pieces of the styrene and make little uh, spiky bits that are kind of like what you see on a lot of orc vehicles and attach those onto the hubcaps adding a couple of those in different sizes to make it look kind of ramshackle and slapped together. And in the same way that I did in my last orc video, I roll up a piece of milliput and I chop that up into small pieces and those are going to be acting as bolts. And as I mentioned in my last video, this is a really important detail. They're quite small details, but it makes everything work together and have the right feel. And so I attach that around the entirety of the miniature, or at least anywhere that would be metallic. I then make a quick base and uh, flatten down part of the wheel that's actually going to be connected to the base itself, attaching both of those with a good bit of super glue. Here you can see the miniature and the, the sculpt um, finished and ready for painting, and I'm really liking how it's turned out so far. I think it kind of captures the silliness of the concept quite well as well as just feeling fairly consistent with the orc style of miniature. But now let's get into the painting for the miniature. So I was going to approach painting the character, the orc, a little bit differently than I did in my last video. Rather than base toning in a mid-tone, I decided I would base tone the entire miniature in the darkest shadow that I wanted to use, and then build up the highlights adding on like three or four, I think maybe five layers of highlights if I'm remembering correctly, brightening the color every single time. For these first few layers of highlight that I add, I don't actually worry about the light source since the first few layers are just adding the basic contrast onto the miniature. And then later on with the brighter highlights, they're actually going to be telling you where the light source is. And it was quite interesting because I found beyond just the shadows being darker, I was actually enjoying this process a lot more than adding the midtone and then uh, adding the highlights onto the midtone and then adding the shadows onto that using like a wash or something like that. I felt like I had a lot more control over the dynamics of this character rather than just relying on the mystical magic qualities of Nuln Oil and the like. Another thing that I did differently, and you can see it on these layers that I'm adding now, is rather than simply mixing in a white with my green, I actually added a yellow to the green. And this made all of the highlights significantly brighter and more saturated. After this, I moved on to paint the squig using the same technique, but I found one thing I wanted to do slightly differently was to make the base tone that I used, the base shadow tone, a little bit lighter, because I found that the um, shadow tone I used on the Gretchen was just a little bit too dark. But I go about this process pretty much the same way that I went about painting the Gretchen, slowly building up the highlights and midtones, but only focusing on the light source as I was painting the brightest highlights. And again, this was actually 
kind of crazy to me as I was painting this because I hadn't really thought about doing this before and I was noticing that it was just turning out so much better. I didn't have to worry about covering any of my highlights that I was working on with shadows or fixing any of my shadow mistakes that covered my um, highlight mistakes or something like that. It was all I really had to worry about was making the highlights. And as I mentioned before, I found that this was a lot more interesting, a lot more fun to do, and also just led to significantly better results on my miniature. Like you can see here, all of these little details and creases and folds in the squig's face are really, really clear and defined, and it just looks fantastic, and it was really fun to paint. And every single highlight color that you add, the miniature just looks better and better and better. Also, one thing that I forgot to do for this project was actually film what paints I was using, so apologies for that, but for this guy I was using Vallejo model colors flat brown mixed with Vallejo model colors clear orange, and also mixing that with a little bit of Vallejo model colors dark vermilion. Adding a little bit of Vallejo model colors white as well to make the highlights nice and bright. I then add a dark brown color to go on all of the hair of the squig, and then add a slightly yellow brown onto the handle that the squig is attached to. I add a dark off-white for the pants of the Gretchen, and a lighter off-white for the wraps that he's got around both his wrists and his feet. And then I go over all of those guys with a wash of Agrax Earthshade, a dark brown wash. Which is a really quick way to get all of the shadows and some of these smaller parts that aren't quite as intricate as the face of the squig or the anatomy on the Gretchen. I then add a little bit of a light yellow brown onto the leather strap that the uh, Gretchen is holding onto. Adding little scuff marks here and there to make it look like worn leather. And I also add a little bit of a highlight onto the pants. Now with the characters mostly finished, I go and add some red onto the plating on the side of the wheel, painting it red obviously because red moves faster. Starting with a dark red that is uh, again dark vermilion with a little bit of black, and then taking the straight vermilion to create a loose um, gradient over the entire thing while all the paint is still wet to create a little bit of interest onto the miniature. I also do a little bit of a dry brush to get some more details around the parts that didn't get hit by the gradient. And then finish it all off with a little bit of edge highlighting. Now the next step to paint is all of the metallics, and so I wanted to have the part in between the red plating and the squig itself to be a metallic. So I go in with a little bit of Vallejo monocolor silver mixed with some Vallejo monocolor black and paint all of that. And then I also go around painting all the other little bits here and there are metal, like the goggles, these little metal rings around the squig, and the belt buckle of the Gretchen. I then add a layer of black onto the wheel. Then I go over all of the metals with Nuln Oil, and this is really great for just darkening up that um, metallic and also getting rid of the granular effect that comes when you mix non-metallic paints with metallic paints. I then also paint the goggles that this guy is wearing, starting by base toning it with a dark red, again more of the dark vermilion, and then I make a gradient going from light to dark, but I actually make the lightest area of the gradient away from where my light source is. And then I add a white shine where the highlight is coming from. After that's finished, I add a uh, edge highlighting of silver onto all of the little bits of metal. And then take that same silver and add that to all of the bolts, which I actually forgot to do earlier. Then, even though it's been staring me in the face for a while, I realize I haven't actually painted the mouths of either the Squig or the Gretchen. So I start by adding a red base coat inside the mouths, and then I add an off-white color onto all of the teeth. Then once all of those details are added, I go over them with more of the Agrax Earthshade, the brown wash, to get into all the details between the teeth, as well as to stain them a little bit so that they don't look too bright. I then go ahead and add a little dot of yellow into the eye for the squig, and then I add a little gloss varnish onto the goggles we had made earlier to give them a little bit of an extra shiny feel. 
and then I finish the miniature off by adding a little bit of weathering and some chipping on all of the paint. I'm really happy with how this project turned out. It's a very, very silly idea, and I'm very happy with the pose that the Gretchen is in, having him kind of flying off the back of the squig, and just overall, it's a very orky miniature, which is, is very, very satisfying. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell to get notified when I release new videos. All that stuff is so, so helpful for a growing channel. Also, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to respond to as many of those as I can, but keep in mind that these videos are all pre-recorded, and I'm not actually at home where I record my videos. Uh, if you want more information on that, on my channel page, there's a video dedicated to answering that question. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So, uh, new orc miniatures from Warhammer Fest, if I'm not mistaken. Let's check these guys out. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay. Um, wait a minute. What on earth is...